then is July of 1965, and a new band is forming in a Los Angeles garage. The group includes a young film student who has never performed, but proves to be a brilliant lyricist and charismatic singer. His name is Jim Morrison, and what emerges from that garage is the legendary rock and roll band, The Doors. The group's drummer, John Densmore, remembers the early days of composing songs with Morrison. Jim um, didn't know how to play one chord on any instrument, so he said, I got these words, I've got some melodies in my head. Just to remember the words, I've made up melodies. So he'd say, before you slip into... Red go, A flat. I go, uh, three, four, and Robbie go, yeah, you know, and we just peck it out like that. Come on, baby, let my fire. It'll take the band almost a year and a half of playing the L.A. club circuit to land a record contract. But when they do, they're an instant hit. The Doors' first album goes gold, driven by the success of the bullet single, Light My Fire. You know the day destroys the night. The Doors' music is not standard fare for top 40 stations. It is filled with Morrison's dark and brooding poetry and is heavy with death and eroticism but it seems to fit with the angry mood of the 60s. The doors soar to the top of the charts and are loved by the critics at the same time. The Factory. When The Factory opened its doors in January 1964, Warhol was already a famous pop art painter. His depictions of everyday consumer goods and Hollywood icons had already jolted the art world and redefined an era. But in his new factory studio, Warhol's creative ambitions exploded in new directions. He bought a movie camera and set out to become a famous filmmaker. Okay, sure. He'd discover his very own screen stars and even become a rock and roll producer. And he went to work on perhaps the most ambitious creation ever to come out of the factory. Andy Warhol himself, the enigmatic superstar. In the mid 60s, New York was the city that proverbially never slept. Thompson, and Andy Warhol was right at home. The pop art painter had already made people see the commercial world around them in a new way. Absolutely beautiful. Now any aspect of everyday life might be his raw material. It's a round the clock blur of activity. Nico and Jim Morrison met, and she was simply drinking some vodka. He was swallowing handfuls of LSD and sleeping pills and ups and downs, and unbelievable. You never heard the story? This was at the castle in Los Angeles, and um, I had brought him there to meet her, because I thought they'd be a cute couple. And um, they met, and they didn't say a word. He stood in one doorway, and she stood in another and they both stared at some place on the floor for hours. And down, she was, he was pulling her hair and they were sort of going like this. It was just moonlight. It was sort of a stagey kind of ritualistic fight. But she went back in the house and came running into my room and said, oh, Danny, he is trying to kill me. And I said, oh, would you just go to sleep? You know, he's not gonna kill anyone. And he had taken off all his clothes and he was walking naked along the parapet, balancing himself. And she was standing down. So that was how they met. That was their first day of romance. This is the end, my only friend, the end. No safety, no surprise. She 
was obsessed with Jim Morrison, carrying around this photograph of Jim Morrison with a vigil light, little candle she'd light in front of it. At night, before she went to bed, she practically did prayers to Jim Morrison. He was still alive. So Jim Morrison. This is the end. sexy person. You need only ask Nico. Well, unfortunately, you can't ask about that. He was very smitten with it. It hurts to set you free, but you never follow me. The end of laughter ends of lies. The end You've been involved with, well, Jimmy Page, John Carl, Lou Reed, Jim Morrison, uh, Jackson Brown, Bob Dylan, Iggy Pop talks about you in his biography. Now, all those people, though, in terms of having worked with them, which one do you think you've learned the most from, in terms of working a personal... Musically, uh, the Velvet Underground, and lyrically, uh, Jim Morrison, and, and Dylan also, but... I think I prefer Jim Morrison's poetry. Did you know Morrison? Jim Morrison? Yes, he was my soul brother. Was he? Yes. Uh, then he told me to write songs. I never thought that I could, because when you come out of the fashion business... Well, certainly Jim Morrison's writing has endured the years. He really inspired me a lot. It was like looking in a mirror, yes. How successful had the doors been when you met Jim? Were they actually the doors where... Oh, no, no, it was the very beginning. Oh, yes. Yes. What, before, prior to the first LP, or the, the doors LP? No, it was the very first, first one.
it has insulted your art? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, well, I hadn't thought about it. It doesn't bother you at all, then? Uh, no. Well, do you think that they've shown a lack of appreciation for what pop art means? Uh, no. Andy, do you think that pop art has sort of reached the point where it's becoming repetitious now? Uh, yes. Do you think it should break away from being pop art? Uh, no. Are you just going to carry on? Uh, yes. <laughs>